Hey there, everybody. My name is Kat Bowser. I'm your resident fantasy therapist. Welcome back to my channel. Those of you here for the first time, welcome. My name is Kat Bowser. I'm a licensed therapist. I'm also a writer working on my first two novels, one startup series, one a standalone. Now, on my channel, I like to talk about what I consider to be the heart of all writing, and that's the psychology behind the characters, behind the world. Because in my mind, that's what makes a world and a character feel real and feel, well, that's what connects me to a story and a character is the psychology. So that's kind of the angle I like to take when I talk about pretty much anything on my channel. So today I have another book review for you guys. I've been reading um, a lot. I read a lot over the Christmas break and I've been reading a lot this month too. So um, I have some new books to recommend for you guys. So today we're talking about Catherine McDonald's um, Kingdom of Thorns. So um, for those of you that don't know, my book reviews are always non-spoiler, so I'm not going to tell you guys anything you won't be able to find by reading the back of the book. I usually start out by just giving you guys the basic synopsis from um, generally the um, author's summary of the story, and then I tell you guys what I liked, what I didn't like, or to be more accurate, what I thought needed work, um, what I thought was unique, and then I give it a psychological realism scale. And by that, I usually take... <laughs> one or two issues that were within the book and I basically tell you how psychologically realistic I thought they were. Now obviously with a lot of these that means I can't go into detail about it but I can give you guys um, basically an idea of if this was a realistic take on a specific subject or not and then I will give that a rating from one to five. I reserve my fives strictly for either real life stories or stories that were inspired by real life stories. So if it's a fantasy book or other fictional book, you're only going to see it go up to four. And then I will give you my overall rating of the book. So with all that necessary stuff out of the way, um, let's start with just the basic summary of the story. So cursed at her christening, Briar is doomed to prick her finger on a spinning wheel on her 17th birthday and plunge her kingdom into eternal slumber. Less than enthused about her fate, she fights to break it, but a hundred years later, the kingdom lies the curse of a, at the center of a forest of thorns. The curse is complete, and only true love's kiss will break it. Volunteering in place of his brother, Leo is determined to brave the enchanted forest and attempt to end the hundred-year curse. If he fails, the dark fairy imprisoned within the kingdom of thorns will be unleashed upon the world and a kingdom and the kingdom and a kingdom I can't talk today will fall to ruin. Guided by a mysterious young rain, ranger named uh, Ty, Ta, Taylor, um, I'm probably saying that wrong, Taylor, he sets off on his quest, but the darkness isn't the only thing that grows in the woods and Leopold finds himself locked in a bitter fight for his life, his sanity, and his heart. A tale of true love, inner strength, and the power of free will. No damsels in distress here. Just action, mesmerizing description, and delightful, witty banter. So, what I like about this story? Well, like the description says, lots of witty banter. I really like the dialogue in this story. The way the characters interact with each other, it feels realistic. And it also feels unique, like... The way they talk to one another, it's not just copy and paste, okay, this is how this character talks to everyone, which is sometimes what I see. Um, instead, it's much more like real people talk to each other. I mean, the way you talk to your best friend is not the same way you talk to the old lady that runs um, the shop down the street. <laughs> and that's really reflected very well in here. Um, piggybacking off of that, I really like the characters in this book. Um, Kind of like the dialogue, they're all unique. Um, you can see kind of, you can see where they were built from. Like, I mean, this story, like, it's a Sleeping Beauty retelling. So this story, kind of like any any fairy tale retelling, you can see what the characters were originally, but the author has really molded them into this very interesting um, collection of characters who... Um, are fun to interact with and it's fun to watch them interact and so I really enjoyed um, a majority of the characters in this book. What did I think needed work? This book has what I call the middle syndrome um, which is where the story kind of lags a little bit in the middle. 
but it's not written poorly and it's it's there for a reason there's build up there's good description there's there's a reason it's there but for some reason it just lagged for me um but not enough to make me stop reading the book so i think sometimes middle syndrome hits every author i really think it does um and i think this is just one of the cases where it did it doesn't last too long um i'd say maybe maybe two chapters at most um that felt a little slow to me maybe they could have been sped up a, a wee bit but overall um that's the main complaint i have is just there's a wee bit of middle syndrome here <laughs> What did I think was unique about this story? Um, well, I'll go more into detail on that on my psychological realism scale, but um, I will say I love a author that will take a fairy tale that traditionally had very passive characters and will make them active. And that's what she does here. And she does it very, very well in that she takes, you know, this character of um, Briar Rose, essentially, who was, you know, the princess doomed to fall to a curse and she does some fun stuff with her like we get to see her before the curse is placed and I like that there is this emphasis on free will and not being condemned to a fate I I love I love it when stories do that because to me the idea of being just condemned to a fate you know this is your destiny this is what's going to happen that's never been appealing to me so I love it when stories that initially had that are kind of written out of it. So I really enjoyed that aspect. <laughs> so psychological realism scale, what would I give it? So there's obviously a lot of psychology in here because um, there is a strong emphasis on character. Um, I want to touch on the fact that uh, Leo takes his brother's place because his brother has just gotten married. So he takes on the responsibility for both his kingdom and to his brother essentially by taking on this quest and I think she the author deals with this very well because a lot of times in stories when someone takes up you know the sacrifice for someone else it's seen as this very heroic wonderful thing that they've done because it's selfless and she does touch on that but she also touches on the fact that this is still someone that's going into a dangerous situation. This is still someone who may potentially lose his own future. And I like that there is this layered aspect to this potential sacrifice. And I think that makes it much more engaging and much more interesting to, to read through because you see why Leo's doing it and you support him in his choice to do it but at the same time it's kind of like well this is not fair <laughs> and i love it when there is this conflict in characters even if you know that they're still going to stick to their guns i like to see characters do that kind of inner conflict because that's what we do i mean even if we make a choice and we know that this is the best choice we can make if if it's not something we're happy about, we're gonna have internal conflict about it. So I love to see that. So overall, I gave this book a four out of five stars. Um, I gave a psychological realism skill of about four out of four. Um, like I said, the middle section kind of drags it down a little bit, but I still really enjoyed this story. I think it's a great uh, retelling of Sleeping Beauty. And so if you're one that really likes um, active protagonists, but you like a little bit of fantasy, a little bit of romance, this is definitely one for you to check out. So thank you guys for chiming in for my video. As always, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave, leave them below. I will get to them as soon as I can. And if you guys don't want to miss when I upload, make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so that you um, are notified whenever a new video goes up. I try to do two a week, hopefully more if I can. And until next time, stay safe. Hope you have a good one.